All right, guys, let's do a quick video. It's not going to be quick, but let's talk about the Damasco DK10. This this model and the DK11, there's some other ones out there as well, but these are really special. As if the brand wasn't special enough, this is some of the earlier models with their in-house A35 movement in it. So we'll talk more on that, and I will try to do the best I can. Honestly, I'm not going to be the best guy to probably fully explain this brand, what they do, the patents they hold the tech they put into their watches, and then their, their these movements that they made were just outstanding, and now there's even more movements out. So let's just talk about it real quick like we kind of normally do with most watches. But 42 millimeter case, if you measure at the bezel, it's 43. 49 lug to lug, you can see a little bit thicker on this guy, 13.9, but that's because of this in-house A35 movement. There are some other models that are very similar to this one, which would have an ETA 2836 in it, and those are going to be a little bit thinner, but they had to add the thickness on this guy to house this crazy movement they built. 22 millimeter lug width here, and a just under six and a half millimeter screw down crown, which if you've not manipulated the crown on a Damasco, when you go to push it in to take those threads, it's like it's on autopilot and it just threads in. It's so crazy the way they have that lube system in there. So the retail price on these is $3,357, but everybody's sold out. They're all gone. They're all sold out. I can't find anybody that has one in stock, whether it's the DK10, this is the black dial day date, and then you had different bezel options. Or if you go for the DK11, which is the one I kind of dig, but the full loom dial, but essentially the same watch with the A35 movement. So yeah, that kind of sucks. They're hard to get. 60 click bezel, ball bearing. There's ball bearings, like ceramic ball bearings, right? Used in this watch. Like everything is going to be the best when you're talking Damasco, the best when it comes to engineering. That's what's in this watch, everything, right? So 60 click bi-directional because you have a 12 hour bezel on this. This is not, I don't want to make it sound like it's difficult to turn. I'm just saying it's not easy to turn and that's intentional because they don't want it to get bumped around. So if you're going to set a second time zone, then you want to be able to just do that and know that it's not going to move. That's the way that's the intent of this bezel obviously is to track that second time zone. You can get a uh, time bezel for it as well, um, meaning like a timer count. I can't remember if it's a, a countdown timer or if it's a regular. I think it's a regular timer, so it'd be this way. So I'm pretty sure that's the case. And then everywhere you look on this, you have a little touch of red, right? So the second hand, full red. The pip up there at the 12 o'clock hour is red. And then if you look down here on this matte black dial, you'll see the letter SI. No, it's not a sports car SI. The SI is, stand, is representing silicon hairspring. That's right. So you have a free sprung balance on this and you have a silicon hairspring. There's a lot of tech in this movement. I'm still learning. I'm gonna try to broad stroke it and I'm gonna not represent it properly, but essentially, most movements we deal with, with the price range that we usually talk in, are regular sprung hairsprings like this on a Seiko movement. Meaning this movement's damaged, so don't get all freaked out when I start touching it. Um, so it has an adjuster. So you can adjust the bead error and you can adjust uh, positive or negative with this post here. All that really means is there's, I don't know what the spring's made out of, but just it's made out of metal, right? And it's attached at two points. But one point is at the end of your adjuster. So the way it's being adjusted is by shortening or extending the length of the spring. That's kind of a crude way to adjust something. And there's other things that come into play. You don't just shorten or lengthen something and think other things aren't gonna change. Yes, it changes the accuracy of the 
the watch, meaning how quick this snaps back and forth, if you ever look at an automatic movement, your hairspring snaps back and forth. That's your timekeeping mechanism. Well, on a free sprung balance, if you look at this guy here, there's no adjustment bar. The free sprung means that the silicon hairspring in this case is um, not connected to an adjustment point. So it's a little more scientific in its length, it's intentional. So it's already at a tight tolerance for its parameters in timekeeping. And then the way they adjust them is, it gets pretty crazy, but there's usually like four balance points. I'm not gonna be able to show it on video. I'll drop in a picture. There'll be four spots on this one. There's sometimes more, but on this one, there's four spots where they adjust or they have adjusters and they balance the hairspring for its timekeeping for how quick it snaps back and forth. It's pretty crazy. Um, it's pretty crazy awesome, really. So, but you can see this is the automatic, the A35 automatic 35, and then there's an H35. So, the H35, I want to see one of those. I'm not sure what watches they're in, but it ditches the automatic rotor and it removes this top base plate because that top base plate and the movement there covers up some gears. So when you go to the hand wind H35 movement, you have a little more to look at. And for being a German movement, uh, I hate to be like that, but like typically the Germans are more like this watch case, right? I shouldn't say that. This is a tool watch, so when you flip it over, you expect to kind of see like a movement that you would see like in a Tudor North Face, uh, North Flag, and uh, non-decorated. This one's like decorated and stuff. It's pretty, right? That's what I mean. So, I don't know. It's pretty cool. Um, the I was wearing my Omega, so here here's another one that's actually free sprung. But, instead of just having the single uh, architecture hanging the hairspring out there this one has a you know balance bridge going across so but it's the same concept they have to uh, regulate it with balancing out that um, spring so anyway I know I probably messed that up and uh, didn't represent it properly but I figured I would I'm learning so I'm just going to tell you what I've learned uh, the crystal on this obviously you can see there's a little hue to it there's AR coating on the top and bottom of this guy. And you can get these with the ice hardened steel bracelet as well to match the case. But uh, this one comes on this strap, which somebody told me who made these. I already forgot. But this one's double stitched. I like that it has the white and the red. Um, I actually have a Damasco on order, so hopefully I'll see that soon. And I did the same thing. I have it on this, this style strap. I really like this strap. It's super comfortable. They... Put this one with this um, clasp. Yeah, I think we're all thinking the same thing. What the heck is that clasp doing on this watch? That is, uh, it doesn't belong. So let me hook it up and we'll put it on. Wrist. So here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And I probably need to adjust it one more position. But the, the one good thing about it is the strap ends up going down below. So it's kind of discreet, but... I mean, really, this is, I would rather just have, like, a regular buckle and tang and stuff. Like, uh, I'm a hard pass on this clasp system. I, If I had this watch, I would instantly look for a different strap or figure out a way to do a different clasp. Uh, just about anything is going to be better than that. So I, I'm a little confused on them putting that on this watch. Because this is, in their lineup, this is a killer model. So I don't understand that. I don't like that. Um, so anyway, uh, big thanks to Brandon for sending this over. He sent me a little note here. He wrote, uh, Rob, here's the awesome DK10, fully in-house movement, free sprung balance with silicon hairspring and escape wheel. Um, and uh, he will be pushing this one on. So I'll be listing this one probably on my Instagram or something like that. So stay tuned for uh, or follow me over on Instagram if you're looking for something like this. Because these are hard to find. Um, for, you know, in good shape. Well, 
they pretty much always stay in good shape unless you get some sort of scratch on the AR coating. But this one's clean and the case and everything, that ice hardened steel just holds up really good. But just an amazing amount of tech. So the big talk with the Damasco movements, most people are talking about the, the new movement, the A26. Now I do want to get one of those in on the show as well. That movement is a little more realistic in the affordable aspect as soon as the price settles or they sort something out because it's more of like um it actually uses or is capable of using some eta parts i believe is the case with that one um but it has an architecture similar to the uh, omega movement here where it has the the bridge going across where the most etas don't do that pretty cool looking movement and i'm excited to see that watch eventually at some point but let's kill the lights check the loom on this um, i believe they use a really heavy application of c1 or their own formula or something and it's supposed to be a, not quite as bright but longer lasting i don't know if that's actually the case if you guys own a damasco and um, can chime in in the comments let me know how long does the loom last because i have the full loom dial da37 coming and i know that one last quite a while um, another kind of letdown i know some people might have i'm pretty sure the arabics are not loomed on this the loom is actually on the outer side there and then the hands so let's kill the lights and check that real quick yeah so the arabics are not loomed on this you so you have the the big triangle the hour minute and then those little loom pips all the way around and i think that red pip up there is slightly loomed but i mean you're not going to get that much loom out of that red color way like that so um, it would have been nice if they would have just printed the arabics with loom so another kind of mystery with me the clasp and then the the absence of loom on the uh, numbers so but the watch is amazing the movement is just phenomenal um, and you get a lot i mean that movement is crazy like crazy like the omega movement is that's but no one's not really hyped up or talking about it too much it's kind of weird all right guys thanks for watching i'll catch you on the next vid